I hope this day have been good to you as it has been for me. Today marks this day for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, it's a sad occasion that we have to host events uh, such as the Pinwheel Garden of Hope, but to bring awareness and education about the devastating impact of domestic violence is crucial. So good evening and welcome. This is our 10th annual Pinwheel Garden of Hope and Candlelight Visual. For those of you meeting me for the first time, I am Vita Brown. I'm the founder and executive director of Sisters Empowerment Network, a not-for-profit, volunteer-based community organization that plays a vital role in addressing issues and concerns that affect victims of domestic violence. We want to help them as they transition out of the turbulent abusive relationships. I am also the chairperson of the Clayton County Task Force Against Violence. This is a statewide task force and we are part of the Clayton County Judicial Circuit. The task force primary goal is to aid victims of domestic violence and hold perpetrators accountable. We are also always looking for dedicated people in the community to serve on the task force and on some committees. So you guys hold on to that because we're going to be coming back at you to do that. Um, so if you are interested in helping to bring education and awareness to the community, we will be glad to provide more information to you on how to join and serve. But for now, we are here today again for our annual Pinwheel Garden of Hope and Candlelight Visual. Um, is Pastor Curtis here yet? He's not here? Okay, so we're waiting on um, District Attorney Mosley as well. Uh, she's not here yet. So until that time, what we can do, did you guys finish with the, the pinwheels they are already? Okay, so we're ahead of the game, it looks like. So what I would like to do while we're waiting is that if you guys want to take a moment and just take a look at the uh, pinwheels, we have 144 known victims and perpetrators. This year we are going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we have listed the perpetrators as well because they too have been killed. Uh, in the turmoil of domestic violence. And again, these are the known cases that we have. And that is so sad when you think about it, that all the countless others that are out here in abusive relationships and they're silent, they're afraid, they're afraid of us judging, they're afraid of us not caring enough and the all important question that everybody think about when they hear domestic violence is, well, why doesn't she just leave? So this year, one of, uh, next year, one of my initiatives is, what are we gonna do to help her? What are we gonna do to help her get out of her relationship? Because the shelters are almost, always, always, do you guys hear me, full. And so what hurts me more than anything is when a woman calls for assistance and I have to tell her, there's no room in the shelter. And so we're gonna have to recreate the way we've been thinking and handling domestic violence situations. Because oftentimes she needs our understanding, she needs our support, she need community members that would say, okay, I will walk with you through this process. And so therefore, we wanna to continue to bring education and awareness so that we'll know that she is getting the help that she needs. It's vitally important for her and her children. So 
um, with that thought in line, Sister Bill, I know you would be playing double roles, but can you go ahead and give us the prayer and we can start. Um, Pastor Curtis, he is a busy, busy man, and I think something, I'm sure something has had to happen that took his attention for a minute. But we're going to go ahead and get started because we want, don't want to hold you all evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Sister Bill for the prayer. Good afternoon. Standing in the place of my pastor, we have had four deaths in our church community this week. So he's very attentive, as Vita knows, but I'll stand in his place if you would bow your heads. Gracious and merciful God, we just first of all say thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as one, saying that we love you and we're here for a purpose and for a cause. But I wouldn't dare go too far in this prayer without asking you to forgive us for our sins all of the things that we have said, done, and thought that weren't like you. We do ask you to forgive us and bless to know we can count it as done. <sighs> Domestic violence. God, you know, we live in turbulent times. We're concerned with the pandemic. We're concerned with earthquakes. We're, we're just so concerned, and then there's domestic violence. So God, we ask you to help us, help us, and Sister Vita has already said that she has a new agenda coming up. We've got to do better. We've got to do more because this is real. We thank you, God, for this and all that you've already laid out in this day for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we do say amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Bill, for that prayer. And we're going to need many more as we go forth. So. Again, while we're waiting on District Attorney Mosley, I just want to reiterate the importance of us coming together as a community and for us to recognize that domestic violence is just not a private agenda for some, but it's a community-wide initiative that needs to be addressed by everyone. And we are going to need your help. I need to be able to call on you to say, you know, uh, can we host an event at your church? Can we do a community activity at the senior center and other places at the schools so that when someone is involved in an abusive relationship, they have resources that they can go outside of Sisters Empowerment. Because how many people know that with one in four, you know someone that's experiencing domestic violence. But are you prepared? Do you know what to do? Do you know what to say? Do you know how to comfort her? Do you know how to listen? And, and look, help her look for resources. So those are some of the things that we're gonna to begin to address. And so um, this occasion, I know we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, District Attorney Mosley, once she gets here, I'll ask her to say a few words, but I am pleased to be able to partner with them uh, for over the years to help bring awareness and education about domestic violence. Uh, District Attorney Mosley is committed uh, to helping victims in her office and the community at large uh, to find resources and to help in any way that she can. And again, once she arrives, we'll hear from her, but we're going to continue to move on with the program because I, I don't want to hold you any longer than we promised 730 to have you out of here. So. We are going to uh, have a poem again by Sister Field Macon. We're going to start the actual Pimpwell Garden ceremony now. Okay? So, Miss Field will come. Hey, sweetie, how's school going? Good? Yeah. 
Don't say grow up so fast. Oh my goodness. How are those grandbabies? Okay. Doing good. <laughs> Joseph, I see you eyeing these flowers, but you know pretty girls like pretty flowers. You already know that. <laughs> I'm going to do this. And I tried to keep it light, Grandma asking about the grandkids. But if I'm going to do it, I'm going to keep it straight 100. And you know, like the kids say. So I'm going to tell you, I got flowers today. You've seen them. <laughs> Now, it wasn't my birthday or any other special day, but last night, we had our first argument. And when I tell you that he said some things to me that were so cold, they cut me like a knife. But when I think about it, I know he didn't mean it. <laughs> I know he was sorry because he sent me flowers. Hmm. I got flowers today. Now, wasn't our anniversary or any other special day last night? He threw me up against the wall and he started to choke me. And I'm telling you, I felt like I was living in a nightmare. And I know I'm standing here talking to you, but it still doesn't seem real to me. When I woke up, I was sore all over from the bruises and the cuts. But I know he's sorry. Because he sent me flowers. I got flowers today, and it wasn't Valentine's Day or any other special day. Last night, he beat me and threatened to kill me. Makeup and long sleeves wouldn't do it this time. It couldn't cover up. Can I tell you that I couldn't even go to work? because I didn't want them to see me and I didn't want them to know. But I know he's sorry. Because he sent me flowers today. I got flowers today. And it wasn't Mother's Day or any other special day. Last night he beat me again. And this time was worse than all of the other times. I see you looking at me. I see the judgment in your eyes. But you tell me, how can I leave them? How can I take care of my children? I've got grandchildren. How am I going to take care of them? Where's the money going to come from? I'm afraid of him, but also depend on him. And I really believe that he's sorry because he sent me flowers. I got flowers today. Today was a special day. Finally, a special day. It was the day of my funeral. Last night, he killed me. If only I would have gathered the courage and the strength to just leave him. If I had just reached out to the women's shelter, they could have helped me. But I didn't. So, 
I got flowers today for the last time. Wow. So many women receive flowers for their funeral because they were murdered by someone they once loved and trusted. Doing my work over the years, it has sat in my heart because I have witnessed some of those deaths. And knowing that you work with people and you try to help them any way that you can, and you get a call and say they were killed by the abuser, it is gut-wrenching. It is so hurtful that I have to go and regroup myself. So it impacts everybody. The, the victims, their families, the advocates, the people that work in law enforcement, and the community. Because those are your church members and coworkers. And so we, again, you'll hear me saying this throughout the event. We have to work together to put an end to the devastating impact of lives lost and people hurt and, and not only physical abuse, emotional, verbal, and did you know that financial abuse is 99% of the cases? So as Sister Phil said, I wanna leave, but I don't have the resources. So again, there's work for all of us to do. And so this part of the program, what we're gonna do is that we're going to call um, Sidra, Andrea, Joseph, and Ann to come. And they're going to read the names of the victims that have lost their lives due to domestic violence. Each year, uh, we provide a list of names of the victims. This year, you may hear uh, a lot of men that's on the list. And men can be abused too, but we look at women because those are the majority of the cases. And just for a note, that the men on the list, they could have been uh, a protector, you know, and that was killed in the aftermath, or they could have been one of the victims, or they just happened to fall prey in the midst of the turmoil. So we wanna do, and this year, what you will hear, they're gonna read the names, they're gonna, read the age of the victims and the county in which they live and if they were the victim of the perpetrator. And so after each one completes their list, I want you all to recite, remember their name. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over. Good evening, community. My name is Sidra, and I am a survivor. Thailand, Hall County, perpetrator. Meekna Lane, Hall County, victim. Ricardo Evans, DeKalb County, perpetrator. LaJasmar Swain, Green County, victim. James Drake, Richmond County, victim. Christopher Rutledge, uh, Mus Muskogee, 
Muskogee, thank you so much. Muskogee County, perpetrator. Debbie Ratledge, Muskogee County, victim. LaWarrior Gardner, Sumter County, victim. Joshua Kennedy, Habersham County, victim. Jasmine Clayton, Coweta County, perpetrator. Melissa Pugsley, Bullock County, victim. John Walker, Henry County, perpetrator. Nolene Walker, Henry County, victim. Cornelius Fortner, Cobb County, perpetrator. Um, Nicole Barrett, Cobb County, victim. Rayshawn Jones, Clayton County, perpetrator. Tanisha Shelby, Clayton County, victim. Alexis Lee Reed, Fulton County, victim. Tashika Shamil Sims, Fulton County, victim. Um, Amanda Parrott, Putnam County, victim. Michelle Wishnot, I'm sorry, Michael Wishnot, Jackson County, victim. Michael Wish, I'm sorry, Lawrence Hill Jr., Ware County, perpetrator. Virginia Hill, Ware County, victim. And Paul Timothy Lord, Ben Hill, perpetrator. Remember their names. Good evening, Andrea Hughley, Prevention Educator, Southern Crescent Sexual Assault and Child Advocacy Center. Stephanie Wade Ellis, 40, Jackson County, victim. Noel Lopez, 35, Catoosa County, victim. Jillian Miles Walters, 36, Gwinnett County, victim. Nikki McKenzie, 51, Newton County, victim. Alicia Grace, Stover, 43, Habersham County, victim. Brittany Aaron Patterson, 36, Barrow County, victim. Scotland Kelly DeVore, also known as John Scott DeVore, 51, Richmond County, victim. Kenneth Bunn, 27, Murray County, victim. Akila Peters William, 20, DeKalb County, victim. Unknown, Fulton County, victim. Michael Prater, 59, Polk County, perpetrator. Rakesha Moore, 36, Polk County, victim. Felicia Morgan, 34, Fulton County, victim. Janet Samuel, 67, Bibb County, victim. James Samuel, 68, Bibb County, victim. LaShasta Childs, 47, Bibb County, victim. Natasha Smith, 36, Gwinnett County, victim. Roy McClendon Thompson, 42, DeKalb County, perpetrator. James Curtis Jones, 45, DeKalb County, victim. Well, I won't hold y'all too long. Um, I'm Kimberly Walden. I'm an attorney with Atlanta Legal Aid. We also have our paralegal over here, Alicia. Um, what we mainly do is help people get temporary protective orders if they're looking to get those, and with other kind of family law issues. If people need custody orders, they need divorces, we can assist with those or at least provide some legal advice for people who are going through that. So feel free to direct people to our office. Um, I don't have any contact information out here today, but feel free to talk to me. I'm happy to give our intake number and my email address. And if you, ooh, okay, I got a mosquito. <laughs> they are eating me today. Um, but yes, feel free to um, come over and talk to me. I'm happy to give contact information. Um, if you have anybody who's in need of legal assistance, feel free to reach out. Um, our office also helps people who are navigating evictions. We help people who need public benefits as well or are having issues obtaining those public benefits. So again, feel free to direct folks to me and I'm happy to navigate you to the right place in our office. Thanks. 
Good evening again. I'm Andrea Hughley with Southern Crescent Sexual Assault and Child Advocacy Center. Um, and so what we do there for Clayton, um, folks in Clayton County, we provide um, services to victims of sexual assault. So I know you all know that sexual assault and domestic violence kind of goes hand in hand. And so we make sure to provide those direct services by way of medical exams, counseling, uh, long list. In addition to those direct services as a prevention educator, I get a chance to go into the schools and work with teenagers specifically with a program called Safe Dates. Um, and so with that Safe Dates program, we're teaching young folks about vile abuse. We're teaching them about dating abuse. And so with the hope that they walk away from that 10 session class, knowing how to not be abusive or knowing to, you know, that they don't need to stay in a relationship where abuse is going because we know that adults don't start being abusive as adults, they actually start as teenagers. And so it's important that we have those conversations early. And so I do, I just urge you guys, um, reach out to the folks at your school and let them know that you want that program in your school. You want your teenagers to know that we're not gonna stand by and allow our teenagers to grow up to be either victims or perpetrators of abuse. So again, my name is Andrea. I think I have some cards in the um, car, but please stop by and ask questions if you need something. Hey everybody, um, like you said, I won't hold y'all, but my name is Erica McKibben. I am the outreach advocate slash case manager slash shelter advocate at Secure's House, and we are the local domestic violence shelter in Clayton County. And like Vita said, we have always teamed up, put our brains together, because it is unfortunate that most of the shelters, because of COVID and other things, are full, but we do our best to try to help victims of domestic violence. We do service for women, men, and kids. We just don't house the men in our shelter. Um, we have a 24-hour hotline. I have some cars in my car as well, so definitely I will go get them and bring them back. But our whole goal is to provide safety for women and um, men and, you know, single women and women with kids who are going through domestic violence. Like Vita said, even before I came here, I was on the phone advocating for shelter. That's what we do. Like she said, the most thing, the courage thing, I always tell a victim when they call, I'm glad you called. I know it was hard to make that call because like she said, it is really hard for a victim to pick that phone up and make their call. People don't want people in their business. They don't want to know. So when they call us, they have hit rock bottom. This is their last resort. So our thing is an advocate, like Vita said, we do the calls to other shelters. We don't want them having to tell their story over and over again. It's hard enough. But at our shelter, we, are, we have 21 beds. Uh, we do house them there. We also do a lot of outreach. So if you don't have room in the shelter, if we have the funding available, we try to put them in a hotel. So at least we can get them somewhere safe. We do offer, besides that, we have child advocacy on site, so kids can have some kind of normalcy while they're in the shelter. It's hard enough coming to a shelter. You know, you gotta realize you got people come from all walks of life that have never been asked for help and never been through this before. So our goal as an advocate, you have to have empathy and you have to listen. Sometimes they just call and they just want to talk. It's okay, I'm here for that. And I always tell people, you're not bothering me. I've had people say, I'm, I hope I'm not, you're not bothering me. That's my job. I'm here for that. I'm here to help you get somewhere safe. We safety plan with them. If they want to leave, go to another state or county, we try to get them there as best as we can. We work with other organizations. But like Vita said, as a community, we have to come together. We all understand the pandemic was very hard. It was hard on me as well. But we have to move forward with this. We have to get more people to have voices and speak out about this because we're we only a little bit here. Think about how many other people out there are going through this who we need to help rise up and raise up. So like I said, I have cards in the car. I'll go get them as well. And if you need anything, any questions, don't feel, don't hesitate to call me. So thank you so much. As you can see, we have some wonderful resources uh, available. Do you want to come and say something about the, what the police? <laughs> Look, I forgot about you because I know you guys play a vital role as well in, in reaching out. So we thank you for all the work that you do. But uh, we have formed a, a coalition over here in Clayton County, if you will, to help one another. We get on the phone sometimes and we call and say, hey, can you, you got a bed, you know, you got money for hotels, and we make it happen for women that take the courage to get out of the relationship, and we try to help her. So at this time, 
we're going to ask everybody to just kind of social distancing, please, and form a circle. And we're going to do uh, light a candle for these victims and as you pray for them. And as you come, again, we need resources. We're going to be doing uh, the chutes and ladders, barrier to leaving an abusive relationship at the Frank Bailey Senior Center next Thursday. And if you have not, we're gonna open it up to other community members. If you have not participated before, I encourage you to do so. It's really thought provoking and it shows just how much we need to work together as a community. And so, um, and then the 5K walk. Please, 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 if you have not registered, please register for the walk. If you cannot walk, please make a donation and sponsor someone, a victim or someone to walk uh, on your behalf. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year. We really need your support and we want you to be a part and come and see all that we offer uh, in the community. This is our 10th year. Where do you get the information? Yes, it's over there on the table. We have some cards, thank you. We have some cards and we have some flyers telling you a little bit more about it. So please, please, please um, stop and get some information. Okay, everybody pretty much got their candles lit. I think everybody is ready. So if we could just do, yeah, I, I give you mine. <laughs> and their children that have lost their lives. And think about what you can do to help, how you can be a part. And I just thank God right now that this today is going to be a game changer. So as we move forward, we light these candles and we pray for each individual here today everyone that has experienced domestic violence and we ask lord that you watch over them and protect them anybody else want to offer a word i hope you can go around the circle while the candles are lit if you want to say anything please feel free and we'll start with Amaris and go around take courage Just call me. Be kind. Speak up. Pray. Have a plan. Stay focused and move forward and never look back. Your love. Stay prayerful. Stay determined to fight against domestic violence. Believe. Remember their names. Be, be more caring. It's not your fault. 
and power. It takes our money. Oh, thank you all so much for coming. You can blow your candles out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> violence. A call to action is what we need. So the first thing is know the signs. The first step to action is to familiarize individuals and the community with the possible signs and indicators of domestic violence. Okay? Get your community educated. That's what we're trying to do now. A good start to eradicating domestic violence from your community or neighborhood is to start educating as many people as possible about domestic violence, its impact, and how to intervene safely. That's an important one. Get your community organized. There is safety and influence in numbers. When intervening to stop an abuser or making your community a place where domestic violence will not be tolerated. And that's what we're working towards. So intervene, but learn how to intervene safely because we don't want to put anybody else in danger. And we have some information. Please read up on it. The next one is listen to empower. If a victim of domestic violence reaches out to you, Listen, let her know, or him, know that you believe her or him and do not judge her choices. That's a hard one to do because people think that they know the answer to everything, but they don't because you don't, you're not walking in her shoes. You don't know her circumstances. So check in with her regularly. If you fear for your friend, co-worker a family member's life, call or text her once a day at a random time to see if she is all right. So you may be working with someone and you see that in the summertime she's got on a turtleneck for an example. And just have a conversation. You know, listen and just tell her you believe her Learn where the resources are in your community and help her, walk with her. Don't leave her, just ask her. And if she just needs for you to listen, then listen. Do that and then be a resource. Help her find the assistance she needs, whether it's legal information. And we have um, Atlanta Legal Aid out here. Oh, there she is. She's over there. They offer resources for victims of domestic violence. Um, I, I may get her to come over here, and Erica also to tell you guys real quick. Uh, Erica is at the um, Secure's house at the shelter. So we want to get them to a safe place. The greatest danger women face in these situations is often the actual process of leaving. So finding a safe place may be key. Knowing this information beforehand may be helpful, but assisting her in research and even making phone calls for her will also help speed things up. Another thing that's devastating to me, I get calls at least every other day. And the woman will say, I got enough courage. I left. I need a shelter. And I'm stunned because, again, the shelters more often than not are full. And so can you imagine the impact that someone gets enough courage to leave and then you tell them there's no room in the shelter for you. And so she has the result to other measures that she probably would not consider. So helping her out, help her speed things up. When you're talking to someone and you know if they're in an abusive relationship, 
tell her, and, and this may sound funny, guys, and it may sound hard, but if she's been in a situation, help her to make a decision before she leaves so she can ensure she has somewhere to go. And, and with that thought in mind, as hard as it is, we know our mate's triggers. We know what push buttons are. We know that. And so, um, and I get this from my mother uh, when she was in the abusive relationship and trying to leave. And she did have to endure a little bit more than usual. But the day she came home and said, you guys pack your things, we're leaving. And she had furnished a whole house from the front to the back. She even purchased her new car, got her a new job, and she never looked back. So it can happen. It can happen, and with community partners, we can make it happen together. So, and the last thing, encourage her to document, document, document. Document any incidents, anything that you witness. If you are a, a bystander and you witness something, document it. Tell her to document it. Take notes of dates, times, injuries, and other observations. Your ongoing documentation can help a victim's courage and credibility because you know uh, uh, perpetrators, they are very manipulative. And so they want to push your button so when you get to court, you look like just this angry woman out of control and you are upset because they are trying to end the relationship. So document, document, document. And so finally, when they're ready to pursue legal actions against their partner, they have some information that they can use. And so quickly, I'm going to ask Ms. Kimberly at Atlanta Legal Aid and Ms. Erica to come up, and also Ms. Andrea quickly to tell her about the resources at, you know, their individual places, and you get information from them. Okay. Before we do that, I see District Attorney Mosley is here. Let's hear from her, and then you guys come, and then we're going to light the uh, candles, and we'll be ready to uh, leave for the evening. Welcome, District Attorney Mosley. Thank you so Thank you. much for coming. I know you're busy. Forgive me for being late. I had to come from Fayetteville. Had an, another 515 appointment that uh, was on one calendar and not on the other. Um, but today begins a month that unfortunately we should never even have, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, because domestic violence is a crime that if people would stop and think and breathe, before they react, we wouldn't have victims. We would not have men and women that we lose every day, and also children, because somebody thought that they control that person's life. Um, it's a sad day, it's a sad month, but we, as those that the loved ones have left behind, we have to stand up and we have to break the silence, because domestic violence lives in and thrives in, in, uh, in the silence. We always hear people say when, when we try to prosecute this, these cases, it's not my business. You know, when the police officer goes to talk to them, it's not my business. When we ask them to come testify to what they saw, it's not my business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's everybody's business. Because when you think about it, when a child loses a mother, or a father to domestic violence, and then the other partner goes to jail, who takes care of that child? It's us. The community then begins, begins to take care of that child. So if we have to take care of the child on the back end, why not take care of it on the front end? Why not get involved and tell the police and, and say, hey, this is my name and this is my number, this is what I saw, and when the prosecutors call, and ask you to come to court, you come and you tell them the truth. And also, let's not put so much weight and so much burden on the victim. Why didn't she leave? You know, why didn't she call the police? 
why didn't she do that do do this and that we never know what someone's going through until you walk in their shoes and fear is a mighty weapon that a lot of the abusers use these women and mostly women but some men are fearful that if they do walk away or try to get away that the that the person is gonna kill them or that they will kill their loved ones or they'll do something to their children. So let's not, when the person finally gets the, the courage to stand up, let's not continue to burden them down. Believe what they say, hear what they say and help them because they're now reaching out for help. When they finally make that call, they're reaching out and saying, I can take no more, I need help. So let's stand up as Claytonians and say no more. No more, not on our watch, will we lose another victim to domestic violence. Vita and her group and all of our, our uh, domestic violence partners are doing a great job. And you know the DA's office has got your back, always. In everything that we do, we're here to educate and just to make sure this is one crime, ladies and gentlemen, I don't wanna have to try. I really don't. Even as a felony, I just don't. It is something that can be stopped. Thank you. Thank you, District Attorney Mosley. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that the youngest baby this year was four months old. And again, those are the known victims. It's a serious issue, guys. And, and we got to address it head on. Otherwise, we'll be 50 more years still doing the same thing, and it's time out. Um, who's going to come on, Miss Kimberly and Miss Erica and Miss Andrea? You guys just come and give them a brief thing about what your office do to help combat uh, domestic violence. Well, I won't hold y'all too long. Um, I'm Kimberly Walden. I'm an attorney with Atlanta Legal Aid. We also have our paralegal over here, Alicia. Um, what we mainly do is help people get temporary protective orders if they're looking to get those, and with other kind of family law issues. If people need custody orders, they need divorces, we can assist with those, or at least provide some legal advice for people who are going through that. So feel free to direct people to our office. Um, I don't have any contact information out here today, but feel free to talk to me. I'm happy to give our intake number and my email address. And if you, ooh, okay, I got a mosquito. <laughs> they are eating me today. Um, but yes, feel free to um, come over and talk to me. I'm happy to give contact information. Um, if you have anybody who's in need of legal assistance, feel free to reach out. Um, our office also helps people who are navigating evictions. We help people who need public benefits as well or are having issues obtaining those public benefits. So again, feel free to direct folks to me and I'm happy to navigate you to the right place in our office. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening again. I'm Andrea Hughley with Southern Crescent Sexual Assault and Child Advocacy Center. Um, and so what we do there for Clayton, um, folks in Clayton County, we provide um, services to victims of sexual assault. So I know you all know that sexual assault and domestic violence kind of goes in hand in hand. And so we make sure to provide those direct services by way of medical exams, counseling, uh, long list. In addition to those direct services as a prevention educator, I get a chance to go into the schools and work with teenagers, specifically with a program called Safe Dates. Um, and so with that Safe Dates program, we're teaching young folks about abuse. We're teaching them about dating abuse. And so with the hopes that they walk away from that 10 session class, knowing how to not be abusive or knowing to, you know, that they don't need to stay in a relationship where abuse is going because we know that adults don't start being abusive as adults. They actually start as teenagers. And so it's important that we have those conversations early. And so I do, I just urge you guys, um, reach out to the folks at your school and let them know that you want that program in your school. You want your teenagers to know that we're not gonna stand by and allow our teenagers to grow up to be either victims or perpetrators of abuse. So again, my name is Andrea. I think I have some cards in the um, car, but please stop by and ask questions if you need something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey everybody, um, like she said, I won't hold y'all, but my name is Erica McKibben. I am the outreach advocate slash case manager slash shelter advocate at Secure's House, and we are the local domestic violence shelter in Clayton County. And like Vita said, we have always teamed up, put our brains together, because it is unfortunate that most of the shelters, because of COVID and other things, are full, but we do our best to try to help victims of domestic violence. We do service for women, men, and kids. We just don't house the men in our shelter. Um, we have a 24-hour hotline. I have some cars in my car as well, so definitely I will go get them and bring them back. But our whole goal is to provide safety for women and uh, men and, you know, single women and women with kids who are going through domestic violence. Like Vita said, even before I came here, I was on the phone advocating for shelter. That's what we do. Like she said, the most thing, the courage thing, I always tell a victim when they call, I'm glad you called. I know it was hard to make that call because like she said, it is really hard for a victim to pick that phone up and make that call. People don't want people in their business. They don't want to know. So when they call us, they have hit rock bottom. This is their last resort. So our thing is an advocate, like Vita said, we do the calls to other shelters. We don't want them having to tell their story over and over again. It's hard enough, but at our shelter, we, are, we have 21 beds. Uh, we do house them there. We also do a lot of outreach. So if you don't have room in the shelter, if we have the funding available, we try to put them in a hotel. So at least we can get them somewhere safe. We do offer, besides that, we have child advocacy on site. So kids can have some kind of normalcy while they're in the shelter. It's hard enough coming to a shelter. You know, you gotta realize you got people come from all walks of life that have never been asked for help and never been through this before. So our goal as an advocate, you have to have empathy and you have to listen. Sometimes they just call and they just want to talk. It's okay. I'm here for that. And I always tell people, you're not bothering me. I've had people say, I'm, I hope I'm not, you're not bothering me. That's my job. I'm here for that. I'm here to help you get somewhere safe. We safety plan with them. If they want to leave, go to another state or county, we try to get them there as best as we can. We work with all the organization. But like Vita said, as a community, we have to come together. We all understand the pandemic was very hard. It was hard on me as well. But we have to move forward with this. We have to get more people to have voices and speak out about this because we, we're only a little bit here. Think about how many other people out there are going through this who we need to help rise up and raise up. So like I said, I have cards in the car. I go get them as well. And if you need anything, any questions, don't feel, don't hesitate to call me. So thank you so much. As you can see, we have some wonderful resources uh, available. Do you want to come and say something about the, what the police? <laughs> Look, I forgot about you because I know you guys play a vital role as well in, in reaching out. So we thank you for all the work that you do. But uh, we have formed a, a coalition over here in Clayton County, if you will, to help one another. We get on the phone sometimes and we call and say, hey, can you, you got a bed, you know, you got money for hotels, and we make it happen for women that take the courage to get out of the relationship, and we try to help them. So at this time, we're gonna ask everybody to just kind of social distancing, please, and form a circle, and we're gonna do, uh, light a candle for these victims, and as you pray for them, and as you come, Again, we need resources. We're gonna be doing uh, the shoots and ladders, barrier to leaving an abusive relationship at the Frank Bailey Senior Center next Thursday. And if you have not, we're gonna open it up to other community members. If you have not participated before, I encourage you to do so. It's really thought provoking and it shows just how much we need to work together as a community. And so, um, and then the 5K walk. Please, 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 if you have not registered, please register for the walk. If you cannot walk, please make a donation and sponsor someone, a victim or someone to walk uh, on your behalf. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year. We really need your support, and we want you to be a part and come and see all that we offer uh, in the community. This is our 10th year. 
Where do you get the information? Yes, it's over there on the table. We have some cards. Thank you. We have some cards and we have some flyers telling you a little bit more about it. So please, please, please um, stop and get some information. Okay, everybody pretty much got their countdown slip. I think everybody is ready. So if we could just do, yeah, I, I give you mine. Today is going to be a game changer. So as we move forward, we light these candles and we pray for each individual here today, everyone that has experienced domestic violence, and we ask, Lord, that you watch over them and protect them. Anybody else want to offer a word? I hope you can go around the circle while the candles are lit if you want to say anything. Please feel free and we'll start with Ameris and go around. Take courage. Be supportive. Just call me. Be kind. Speak up. Pray. Stay prayerful. Stay determined to fight against domestic violence. Believe. Remember their names. Be, be more caring. It's not your fault. Empower. It takes our money. Oh. Thank you all so much for coming. You can blow your candles out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 